Hi guys, and welcome back to Ask Reese, where I answer your questions about real estate. Today, I'm joined with Justin Eastwell. Reese, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Thanks for coming to have a chat. That's okay. Yeah. Justin's from our commercial team. Um, Justin looks after the Toowoomba CBD area, I guess is, uh, is his specialty. Um, and off the back of the last couple of videos we've done, we've been talking about Toowoomba, the real estate market, uh, and trying to, I guess, look at why, I mean, I think that we're, we're set potentially for a boom, but in order for that to happen, I think the key ingredient for me is to make sure that the economy is also ticking along as well. To me, Justin's got a real, I guess, pulse on the heart blood of what, what's going on uh, in the CBD, in the economy. So I just want to have a chat to him about, you know, what, what he's seen, um, where, where he thinks, uh, you know, potentially we could improve on that. And uh, yeah, any, I guess, predictions for the future just around retail, the CBD and everything that's going on. So Justin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, so obviously thanks for bringing me along. Uh, Reese, yeah, much right. uh, appreciated there. Um, so I've been with Collies International now for four and a half years. Yep. Um, yep. Prior to that, um, had uh, well, 20 years in hospitality and uh, retail. Yep. Um, and that's been predominantly here in the CBD. So yep. obviously that background that I've had um, through those industries has sort of you know given me good insight into, you know, how the CBD ticks and obviously what works and um, you know the the business case that um, you know potential tenants um, you know or, or owners are looking for. So yep. um, you know did 15 years in hospitality, uh, managed you know a number of cafes and yep. hotels here in Toowoomba, um, and then yeah done retail for five years just prior to you know coming across to, to Colliers. So yep. yeah yeah right. Nice. So that's been that's sort of brief. Brief, brief, brief background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. yep. And um, yeah, so I guess you know a, a background of service and um, I guess the ins and outs from whether it's from a tenancy point of view, running a business, and yeah, I guess just knowing the CBD and uh, yeah, really good resource. Justin's fantastic, <laughs> um, mate. So I guess the main thing for me is uh, probably just to get a, a bit of a sense of like what the like what's the current climate of the CBD for you, like from a commercial property perspective. Like, what's your feel on it at the moment? Yeah, look, yeah, you know, I love the CBD. I think, you yeah. know, Toowoomba CBD is fantastic. And, you know, I've seen a lot of changes take place over that, you know, this last 20, well, actually, it's about 23, 24 years I've been yeah. sort of working in it. Um, if I go back to when I was a, you know, wee lad. Yeah. Um, so there's been, you know, change, but there's also been the same. Yeah. Um, you know, we are very uh, insular, I think, Toowoomba as, a, as an economy, you know, compared yeah. to, you know, the state and obviously compared to, to nationally. So, you know, we've got a lot of uh, protection here in the economy, you know, through you know, obviously a diverse range of uh, industries. So, you know, the agriculture, you know, the, the, the mining, um, obviously education, yeah. health, um, you know, there's, there's quite a diverse range of industries here that help keep everything bubbling along. Now, yeah. obviously there's no denying the fact that the retail sector is, you know, suffering at this point. There's obviously a lot of negativity around it, yeah. um, you know, with, with the downturn in retail spend. Yeah. Um, and look, you know, we probably haven't been insulated from that like we have been yeah. in the past. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at the numbers, you know, nationally um, around retail spend and definitely that the retailers are hurting. Um, I think there's been, you know, a big part of that has probably been down to, you know, obviously the expansion of a lot of larger um, retailers, you know, yep. especially you know, your Harvey Normans and your Bunnings and things like that, where they've taken a bit of a stranglehold on a lot of what was traditionally a mum and dad yep. operation, so your little hardware stores and your yep. little, you know, small electronics, your furniture retailers and that. Um, so that, I think, has had a bit of a play as well. Um, and look, no one can deny the fact that the internet has had a huge impact yep. on the bricks and mortar retail yep. um, and you know a lot of government statistics state that you know it, it, it's it's only a very small amount of the, the actual economy um, but i think it's a lot more than what people actually understand so yeah um so i think that's had a massive impact um you know here you know local if we look at this on a sort of macro level locally um you know the cbd you know, a lot of people sort of ask about how grand central has impacted the cbd and it's going to kill the cbd again I don't think it is. Yeah. Um, you know, we look at obviously the tenants that are currently in Grand Central at the moment, and obviously since they've done the expansion. Yep. And look, those retailers don't generally would go into high street retail unless you're in like, 
you know, Burke Street Mall in Melbourne or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. you know, we've got to be fair and reasonable around what the expectation is from these, you know, nationals or international brands yep. and, and businesses. And they're not going to be taking a little, you know, 100 year old building in, in, shop in front. the yeah. shop front CBD. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's got to be a bit of a, a, a look at it the way that, you know, what have we got to offer from yeah. commercial property yeah. versus what the use or the demand is from the end occupier. So, yeah. um, you know, I look at the CBD and there's still great opportunity there for some, you know, really smart, forward-thinking business owners. Yep. Um, you know, I love the fabric of the CBD where we've got, you know, these little small businesses that are still there running, yep. um, you know, I've got my personal favourites that I go to yeah. on a daily, yeah. weekly basis. Um, and the reason I go to them is is for the experience, you know. And I think, you know, some of the... Re- there's been obviously some commentary there f- through the media and obviously some other, um, you know, compatriots and uh, other agencies around, yeah. you know, the perceived vacancy in the CBD. Um, and, and I sort of raised the question, well, yes, we might have a certain number of vacant shops at the moment CBD but is that any different from the last 20 or 30 years yeah yeah. you know there's always going to be vacancy you're never going to be 100% full Um, if we were 100% full all the time I basically wouldn't have a job yeah (laughs) it's it's probably the 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 simplest way to put it Um, so I asked that question um, you know is it any different to what it has been what it has been you know over those you know last couple of decades um, the one thing I can say is obviously you know, I think with where the vacancy is in the CBD now, mm-hmm. um, it's probably changed from where it has been over the last 20 years. Okay. Um, example is obviously you know, the section of Margaret Street, which was formerly known as East Street. You know, yeah, yeah. It wasn't designated to be a, a restaurant precinct. Yeah. It just so happened that a number of food... <clears throat> That's how it evolved. Evolved, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So you know, it was never... Destined, destined for that no. it wasn't designed for that yep. um, but if you look at that now obviously there is a bit of vacancy through that section of Margaret Street now but what we have seen is increase in occupancy around in that sort of Ruffin Street area yep. um, you know for, on, on the southern side of Margaret Street so and that's been as a result of the Walton store development yes. um, so they've done a great job there to, to bring you know tenants around to there and obviously the foot traffic has increased through there the vehicular traffic and car parking has increased through there so that's kind of probably taken a bit of focus away from it, you know. What what, what traditionally would have been Eat Street or that section of Margaret Street. Correct, yeah. correct, yeah. Um, so, and I think now, like, I look around and I see the amount of people walking. I think there's definitely more people walking through the CBD to access Grand Central as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think they've got an offering there now to help bring people through. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of negativity around, you know, the, the car parking in the CBD and, yeah. and that, um, you know, I've got some views yep. around that yep. um, you know where definitely we do need some multi-level yeah. parking um, I personally would love to see centre street parking disappear yep. um, you know a lot of people uh, think that's a crazy idea <laughs> um, you, know, you know why is a customer going to come to my shop now you know if there's no parking at the front well end of the day you've got to have an offering and and, a, and an experience that you know the consumer yeah. wants so you know yeah. if you look at grand central and its current format yeah. you know to walk along from one end of grand central or downstairs take the travel ladder up walk the distance of the first floor you're at a bit over about 1.1 kilometers really that's how far it is now people oh, yeah. do that so yeah you know the idea that oh you can't park 50 meters away from a shop on margaret street you know it's I think it just astounds me that people won't do that. Yeah. But if you take away the car parking and have multi-level parking where people can go, there's a destination, they park, they get out of their car, they walk along the footpath, they walk past shops they may not, not have even known Considered. was there. Yeah, yeah. And there's a good chance you'll get a sale. Yeah. You know, so that it's a bit forward thinking, um, yeah. and I think that's where we need to go. Um, you know, with with the CBD and you know, it was a lot of people are so stuck on this idea that. You know, we need to park out the front. And yeah. the only reason you need to have that is because the car park is right there. Yeah. Take it away, relocate somewhere else and have people walking through the CBD. Yeah. You know, you look at all the old photos of the 1970s and there were swarms of people there. And I know we didn't have Clifford Gardens, we didn't have Kmart, so yeah. there's that argument as well. Um, but, but we were also, we weren't population, we were. Exactly right, yeah. exactly right. It's not, so. a, it's not like this is a like it's not like they've all evolved and nothing else has changed no no <laughs> this yeah. is the evolution of a city yeah yeah so yeah. i think you know you know with um you know the offerings that we have and and 
the, I know council have done a reasonable job in trying to reduce the amount of commercial creep, you know, in the CBD yeah. into this sort of outlying areas. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the the northern entrance to the CBD there now has been sort of earmarked as the expansion of the CBD, yep. and that will obviously help, you know, with the with the mill precinct and so forth going ahead there. Um, and you know that's going to help service those people that are living now. Yeah, you know, the, the population growth we've had in high fields. To the north, yeah. Exactly right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, there's a few things that can be done that can help, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to have a product and, and uh, you know, a, a service that, that a consumer wants, you know, that's the end of the day. So, you know, yeah. no, no matter how much parking we have in the CBD, if you don't have that... Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's not going to help your business, no. Yeah. So, mate, before we get too far down, yeah. That, yeah. too far down that conversation, um, f- to... To sort of take what you've just said there, like in how I would look at that is um, there's definitely been some, uh, I guess, some negative views in relation to, I guess, the Grand Central expansion as as something that's taken away from other businesses. Um, My view on that, and I think Justin's is the same, I I would think of that as, well, as Justin said, some of the tenancies that are in there are never going to be, you know, your high street sort of uh, shops, like Mm. they're just not going to fit that model. Um, but I, I look at it as I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great draw card, and 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 it's yeah. it's uh, uh, spoke to um, Dan uh, the other week, and we were talking about commercial in Toowoomba, and I think that uh, it's another one of those foundation things. I think that it is ahead of its time, and, oh. that, and that we will grow into it. Correct, correct. Um, but I think that there's, as you say, um, you know, people have got to evolve with that. As well. we, like with Grand Central, you know, I, I think, you know, yes, it is ahead of its time. I, yeah. I think that's definitely a, um, a, a fair comment. Yeah. Um, the way I look at it at the moment is that Tum is really suffering from a lack of migration and, you know, population growth. Yeah. Um, you know, we've always been needing that extra sort of 20,000 people with, you know, working people, not retired people, like, you know, yeah, retirees yeah. with that have probably less discretionary spend. Yeah. Um, we, we've always needed them. And I think where we're at the moment with Grand Central, if someone was to come up from Sydney, Melbourne, Gold Coast, even Brisbane, and they see that level of amenity that we've got here, and it's something that they're used to from where yeah. they come from. Yeah. They may consider Toowoomba as a as a reasonable a viable option to, to live yeah. in. You know, yeah, and especially with the amount of um, growth that we're having in the western, um, you know, industrial precinct through yeah. there. Um, you know, that's going to have a massive impact to the Toowoomba's economy over the next sort of five to ten years with the level of growth that's going to go out there. Yeah. Um, the inland rail announcement we've already seen. You know really good inquiry from yeah. very large operators yep. um, that we've never had or been able to cater for particularly yep. here in Toowoomba so yep. when those businesses come up and you know corporations come up and want to look at Toowoomba you know they need to make sure that a you know there's a, a city that can support their their, 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 their employment and their staff yep. if they have to relocate them and I think Grand Central's a part of that yeah so you know the thing is you have to build it now because if you build it when you kind of when need, you need it, it it's, it's too late it's too late yeah. it's, it's too costly um, yeah. so I think you know it's it's a necessary evil if you want to call it that yeah um, depending so, on your perspective <laughs> yeah yeah exactly right so it's um, I think we needed to help that growth oh, you know definitely so back bringing it back to like back to the CBD like what what would be your best advice for whether it's an existing business or a new business or uh, you know property owners in the CBD yeah. like what would be your best advice to uh, I guess capitalize on that or you know you touched on at the start when we, when we first started chatting about like getting a feel on the market that that the places you like to go to it's an experience that keeps bringing you back yep. like what would your best advice be would it be improving that experience or is there more to it from your perspective yeah look it's, it's a bit of a um, it's a big question it's a big yeah, look it is a big <clears throat> question um, the way I sort of look at it at the moment is that you know we we started having these, like as I said, like they mentioned before, like the Bunnings and the Harvey Norman's yep. and stuff like that. So we had these large retailers that started to take over, you know, the mum and dad's um, operational. That's yeah. right. And yep. basically, they were operating on the provision that you know, it was a one-stop shop, and there was a perceived value there around obviously price point. Okay, yep. so yep. what's happened is the consumers trained now to basically shop by price. price so point. Yep. look, no one really goes to Harvey Norman and like. Prove me wrong. Yeah, yeah. They don't go there for the sales experience. They go there because they know they can get a product and they can probably get it at a price. It's probably competitive on price. Correct. Yeah. So that's it. And uh, so 
then the internet's obviously come involved. Mm-hmm. And look, we know that obviously uh, Harvey Norman had, uh, Jerry Harvey had some comments there a few years back around obviously reducing um, the overseas purchase amounts from $1,000 to try and, you know, with those GST sales. Because yeah. there's a lot of GST that we're missing out on as, as, a, as, a, co- as, a, as a country. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it was obviously affecting them, especially in the small electronics, you know, uh, sector. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, then with the internet, there's that people are using the internet from a convenience perspective. Yes. But also, too, from a price perspective. Okay. Yep. So, if they can buy it cheaper online, they're going to go to. But what I'm seeing now is that the consumer is also missing out on the experience. So, when you do have a, a, a retailer or a cafe or restaurant bar, that provides an excellent experience and there's an engagement then with the customer or the consumer, people are more willing to keep going back. Yeah. Because we, we are, we're, we're human beings, we're, we're, we're creatures of sort of habit a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we are. Um, and we like to feel warm and fuzzy. Yep. So if you can go in and, and have an experience and obviously the product's got to match, you know. Yeah. Like, and people are, everyone says they're prepared to pay more if the service if is the good. If the experience is good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's not always about price. Yeah. Um, but the thing is now, like when we look at, you know, cafes, restaurants, you know, even the retailer, we're no longer comparing that business with the business that's around the corner or yep. on the next block yep. as their com- competition. The competition now is your best experience that you've had in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Melbourne. London, yep. Yep. If you, you know, New York, you know, yep. if, if you've, you've been, been overseas, it's, yeah, that's, that, your, that's your benchmark. That's your benchmark. That's yep. right. So you'll always remember that. So that becomes your, your benchmark and yep. then everything else compares to that. So yep. unfortunately, you know, because we are now global as a, as a you know, consumer, you know, we've got, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, you know, yep. we, we can follow, like, I don't, I don't know how many people now follow businesses yep. that are located in other cities yep. and talk about them favorably yet they may never have been there yeah yeah but yeah. they talk about them because they have an engagement with them through this whether it's social media or yeah. just on the internet or exposure through other people that have been there it, it, you know back back to i guess word of mouth whatever it happens to be yeah, yeah yeah so i think that's probably the key thing you know is um you know we, we need to sort of tap into that and so know, ra- so ra- raising the bar in terms of we're not just competing with ourselves. We are very much in a, you know, it, this economy is part of a global economy. Like we're part of a bigger. And it is, and unfortunately the, the business world is changing. Like, yeah. you know, before you could probably do a five or 10 year plan for your business. Unfortunately now technology and everything that's going with it, it's meaning that it's having to change a lot quicker. And if you don't adapt to that, mm. unfortunately you're gonna be left by the wayside. Now, yeah. obviously as soon as something new and shiny pops up, Consumers going to go there, so you've got to then reinvent yourself to an extent to do that. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of businesses in Toowoomba that have been very long-standing. They've been yeah. here for a long time. They've been through a lot of financial cycles. But sometimes you've got to question: Go, well, is what you're doing to, just because it worked in 1990 doesn't yeah. mean it actually works now in 2019? Yeah. What's the What's the next evolution? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So there's it's harsh to say, but definitely you know, businesses sometimes do need to, have to take stock of where they're yeah. at. And are they still relevant in today's business world? Yeah. yeah so any businesses that are, are, are wanting to stay, as you say, hit the nail on the head, wanting to stay relevant and be around for another five, 10, 20, 30 yeah. years time. It's a case of, all right, well, what do we need to do to make sure we're still current, we're still viable, we're still relevant to the customer, we're providing a level of experience for them for it to become part of, you know, a consumer's habit to come and see you. Yeah, and and probably you know, and on the flip side of that, you know, talking about obviously, you know, with, with, you know, that's the business, and you know, perhaps the tenant or the owner occupier that might be in that particular building. Yeah, it's also now the buildings in the CBD. Yeah, you know, they're no, many of them are no longer conducive to conducting a business in today's business world. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of them are very old. You know, they. We've experienced a pretty good generational change over the last probably four or five years in that there's been long held to all the CBD properties changing hands. Yes. There's been, you know, not a lot of capital expenditure put into maintaining those buildings. So Pre- Previously? Previously, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, whereas now, like, obviously, a lot of the buildings are kind of beyond their use-by date, yep. if, if, you yep. know, to, to, to put it bluntly. Um, you know, there's going to be requiring a lot of capital input into there, but unfortunately... If there's a new owner buys a property and they've got to put in a lot of capital expenditure or, uh, uh, onto the property, yeah, you know, improving for improvements, yeah. yeah. So you know, disability compliance, um, you know, or even just trying to make the the, 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 the space more usable for a business today. Before, before you even consider cos- cosmetics and just Cor- making it look pretty. Yeah, electrical yeah. upgrades, all the rest that goes yeah. with it, fire compliance. There's a lot that goes into it. So unfortunately, that does raise the rents. 
Yeah. Because at the end of the day, commercial property is investment yep. and the owner needs to get a return on their investment. Yes, yes. So, so that's where obviously it's a very fine line that you know, we tread in relation to making sure that the rents are affordable for a business to be viable. Yes. And also then that the owner is actually getting a, a return on their investment. And, and that they're in a, I mean, as an owner, that you're in a position where it is viable for you to reinvest in your investment, meaning improving the building, making it more appealing to a a current or future business. Yeah, that's right. There's still, there's still numbers involved. So, you know, if, if, if you buy a building for a million dollars and then you have to go and put 200 grand into it, well, we need to adjust the lease rates to yeah. potentially look it's at that. It's got to reflect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, there's there's ways you can do it and obviously structure leases to suit. Um, I think that, you know, we probably are missing out. If you look at a lot of the other, you know, major centres, um, you know, those metro areas that, um, you know, there's a lot of older buildings in there, but they are at a lease price that allows... Refle- reflects that? That reflects that, yeah. but it allows a bit more of a startup type of business or, you know, fostering, you know, new businesses to get in, have a crack and get established so, and then go from there. So it's, um, what's the word? It's like, it's like an achievable or a, yeah. yeah, I guess an affordable entry point. Yeah to then build a business yeah, that and, might grow. And potentially, look, you know, obviously I, I am a commercial <coughs> agent and, yep. you know, landlords pay me. That's how I make my, um, you know, income. And, but, you know, there's, Toowoomba has had a very lucky run in relation to that because we have such a constrained yep. CBD that generally the rents that have been asked for have been achievable <laughs> yep. from because there's the, the, the supply hasn't been there. Yeah, it's been limited So options. it's supply and demand, exactly right. So that's where, you know, owners have managed to get some pretty achieve some pretty good rates so justin i mean we've had a, we've had a really good chat about like where or what your best advice would be for businesses in cbd mate what like what do you believe would have the biggest impact on the cbd we briefly chatted about the other day or you mentioned it about the the concept of maybe removing um center street mm-hmm. parking we've talked about brisbane cbd different cbds where i think like just the flow of traffic, whether it's people in cars, on foot, et cetera, works better. Like what? Yeah, look, definitely, um, yeah, look, obviously that's just one part of the equation. Like, you know, we're all so focused about, you know, Centre Street Park and that's kind of, you know, I think let's just think about it differently. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing I've noticed is that since, um, you know, Grand Central's come about and they've um, reopened the, the road network on Victoria Street and Neil Street to two ways. Yes. It's definitely created impact with congestion. Now, you know, way I look at it is that, you know, we've got potentially well, another two, 3,000, you know, homes to be, you know, land sold, like allotment sold yeah. in the yeah. wider Toowoomba area. So, you know, the, the, if we look at two, two cars per home, you know, there's another you know, five, 6,000 vehicles uh, that we've got on the road. So it's a little bit different on that. So I think definitely you know, having, you know, yes, car park is an issue, but that, that can be solved by multi-level parking. Mm-hmm. I believe that, you know, we sh- why are we backed up in Toowoomba CBD for you know, up to 10 minutes at a time? You know, we need, you know, multiple lanes going in each direction. Um, you know, you look at every other major metro area, you've got three or four lanes of traffic going in one direction to help now. That's part of the equation. I think the biggest thing that's going to really help the Toowoomba CBD is population growth. Okay. You know, we, yep. we, we really need that population growth, and that's where, you know, bringing in, you know, within, off the back of the inland rail, I think there's going to be some good opportunity there to bring new industry into Toowoomba, so that's okay. going to help that. Um, look, I don't think the second range bypass, that's a small equation of it, I think, yep. you know, there. Yep. Um, I think one of the biggest things, and this was talked about back in the 90s, was obviously that, that rail connectivity for passengers between here and Brisbane. Here and Brisbane, yeah. You know, we've got affordable housing here, you know, if you, if you want to buy a house around 400 grand in Brisbane, hmm. you're basically an hour away, yeah. you know, from, from the CBD. Yeah. So, you know, could you imagine those people, instead of living in the northern suburbs of Brisbane or, you know, Logan or wherever it might be, they could live here in Toowoomba and have a great lifestyle. You know, they can drop their kids off to school in 10, 15 minutes. They can be at work in 15 minutes. You know, if they lived here, you have know, mum's working here and dad's working in Brisbane. Yeah. You know, dad jumps on the train at, with Cot and he can be at work in an hour. Like, yeah. there's, I think that's going to have the biggest impact. Now, if you compare us to um, Ballarat okay. in Victoria, yep. um, so similar population. Yes, yes. Are uh, there. They have boosted the economy there through a couple of things. So the, the state government of Victoria decentralised um, some of their departments. So okay. some of their government departments are now based in Ballarat as okay. opposed to being based in Melbourne. Yep. That's definitely helped. Now, they've got a, a rail network, so you can basically jump on there um, and with it sort of in an hour, I think it's about an hour or 45 minutes, you, you, you're in Melbourne. Yep. Okay, so now 
the big thing is there is that there's about two and a half thousand people per day that live in Ballarat that work in Melbourne, mm -hmm. so they travel in there for work. Mm -hmm. At the same time, because of the decentralisation, there's two and a half thousand people that live in Melbourne that go to Ballarat for work. Really? Okay, so okay. that's on a daily basis and it's affordable. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, even if you live in Melbourne and you're working in Ballarat, you're still spending money on coffee, you're still you know, spending money on lunch, you know, you might have after work events, things like that. And those people that are working, living in Ballarat, working in Melbourne, well, they're home on the weekends. Yeah, they're still, still going on the weekends. They're Kids still going to school. Woolies. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah. So I think that's going to have a massive impact. And you know, obviously, there's some discussions around that. You know, that that passenger uh, rail connectivity. You mm -hmm. know, off the back of this bid for the Olympic Games. Yes. Um, yes. You know, obviously, if the infrastructure is put in place to cater for the Olympic Games, well, obviously, that's a good result going. You know, past that, yeah. um, you know, you're in two minds sometimes with the cost that goes into hosting games. Is it really worth it? You know, um, but that's a separate separate story. But I think, but if you, I think if you like with any of those games, my observations are that if infrastructure is, if those games help facilitate and bring in and improve yeah. infrastructure. That's the long-term benefit. Oh. You might not cost you. Yeah. Like Barcelona is probably one of the, the classic examples of how, where it worked. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So, you know, Barcelona was obviously you know, pretty average before the Olympic Games there, and then since the Olympic Games, like it's a it's a tourist it's hotspot, a thriving city. Um, yeah. And that's probably another part is that you know tourism here in, in this region. You know, why aren't we the Blue Mountains of New yeah. South Wales? You know, we're, yeah. we're you know you look at the Blue Mountains to, to what it is to Sydney. Why aren't we the Blue Mountains to, to, to Brisbane? Yeah. You know, um, so I think that's part of it as well. I know there's a bit of a push, um, you know, to get increase the you know the sports tourism especially off the back of the uh, the escarpment of what we've got here and the natural resources that we've got that we can use yep. you know through mountain biking and hiking etc like that so I know there's a bit of a push there from you know some parts of the community to really increase that and I think that'll have a good effect and it's had a great effect similarly to, to you know like Derby in, in uh, oh, Tasmania yeah. and yep. uh, down there so it's there's there's cases out there where it shows it works and I think you just need to have a bit of you know obviously local government and state government need to have a bit of a, a bit of a look at that you know Toowoomba relies very heavily on private um, people doing the work I think you know, yeah. uh, carrying the heavy load they do carry the load you know off the yeah. back of wagons FKG and those sort of guys there um, you know there's a lot there that they're carrying to and they're putting it into the community, you know, so... Yeah, yeah to push things forward. And yeah. it'd be nice to... Like, I agree... I mean, we've spoken about it before in terms of the tourism side of it. I think that Toowoomba is such a wonderful place on so many different levels, and yeah. I think that tourism is... I mean, we're known for being the Garden City and uh, Carnival Flowers and all that sort of stuff. I just think that it just seems like it's such a small component when... It should be one of our biggest draw cards. Well, yeah, and that's thing, like, you know, we, we're talking about, you know, tourism from you know, outside the Toowoomba region, you know, so whether it be, you know, within, you know, the southeast Queensland market, you know, is it tourism to, you know, people within Australia, is it international tourism? Um, but there's also domestic tourism. So, yeah. um, you know, a classic example, and if we're talking specifically about the CBD, mm. um, the first Coat Festival that was on, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, the first time ever that I saw people covering areas of the CBD that they never ever mm. saw before. They were on foot walking around, yeah. having a great yeah. weekend to check out all the all, all the yeah, the graffiti artwork that was around town now. I've never seen that many people walking around the C B D ever. Yeah. Um, for the for the actual intent of exploring the CBD. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, everyone just rather jump in their car, but this was yeah. an opportunity for them that they could actually take a map and walk around and look. So, yeah. so it's even little sort of programs like that that help, you know, the domestic tourism as well. So, it's yeah, there's a lot to, to, to that. But I suppose, yeah, it's just population growth is probably, you know, the biggest thing that's going to help us. Yeah, yeah and just so popul population growth for people who actually reside here, yeah. which obviously, I mean, we've spoken about the residential side. We, we've got we've got a great foundation. I think there's a lot of things there that are going in the right direction, but it's just making sure that comes to fruition. But also too, I think um, having a transient population is really important as well, which is in terms of tourism. Yeah. Like I think that you look at somewhere like uh, New Zealand, for example, um, obviously a very appealing place to go to, but I, th I just think that Toowoomba is a, it's a beautiful region. There's so much here to explore um, and it, it feels like I mean things like First Coat I thought First Coat was fantastic when yeah. that first came through I thought it was great um, it would be wonderful to see those types of or, or different uh, draw cards for the city um, come along more often well that's right yeah and I think it had a, a positive 
attribute or feeling about the CBD. Yeah. So, and that's a big thing at the moment, obviously. With there is some vacancy around. Um, you know, as I said before, is it any more than it is usual? Um, obviously, the retail spend is down. Yeah. Um, you know, people are probably the dilution that of you know your household discretionary spending. It's probably spreading across more businesses yeah. now. So, yeah. so the, the same level of household discretionary spend is there, but you're just spreading it around it's businesses spread, a bit more yeah. as opposed to concentrating on one or two businesses. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think there's a level there where we need to have like that negativity breeds negativity so yes. okay so you know and obviously I, I don't believe the, the local newspaper has any um provides any benefit to that you know they, yeah. they feel that a little bit so whereas you know first co vessel what i'm getting to is that it had a positive feel to a, it, yeah and everyone you spoke to that went out there and did it loved it yeah. so if you can get those kind of you know positive feelings around it then obviously everyone sort of starts to benefit but yeah. I think at the moment there's just been a little bit too much negativity around and yeah. you know we've just got to look at it and go well this is a bit of a phase in the cycle yeah. um, you know and be smart about if you're a business person be smart about where you you know your you operating expenses and things like that and really trying to come up ways that you know you are future proof in your business so you yeah. know and, and as a yeah a hole around the CBD I think if everyone did, thought that way then I think the CBD is a good space yeah yeah and I think like just on the the negativity side of things like I genuinely believe and I think Justin would agree with me I think we are I think we are spoiled I think as far as Queensland goes we're we're uniquely positioned um, and uh, you know and then broader than that nationally you know I, I just think that there's so many things that we that are positive for us and, and moving forward that if the focus is there I think that will that will help improve things as well yeah yeah I, I just think yeah Toowoomba, Toowoomba's a great city you know and I think everyone <coughs> that you know comes to Toowoomba as an outside visitor you know comments on how great you know yeah. how how bigger it is than they actually thought it was you yeah. know obviously they must all think that we wear cowboy hats and there's you know kangaroos <laughs> jumping down the street so yeah. when they actually get here and see what it's like it's, it's a bit of a surprise for them yeah and you know most people from Toowoomba are pretty proud to be from Toowoomba as well and you know um, you know a lot of us stay you know longer than, and and probably don't move away like everyone wants to when you leave school yeah um, so yeah. I think you know Toowoomba is a unique, unique space and you know I think it's um, we're a consistent performer yeah um, you know, I know you mentioned that you know are we looking down the barrel of perhaps you know a bit of a boom I'm probably not of that opinion I think Toowoomba is very much you know a very consistent year-on-year mm. -year growth um, without those booms, the, you know, you look at the places that have property booms, and generally there's going to be a big bust. Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. And so yeah. when you look at that, you know, the the if you're looking at talking about property, um, and obviously with with the capital, you know, growth, you know, those big places that have booms, they're generally relying around one industry. Yeah. There's one reason why they become a boom. Yeah. Okay. So when you sort of look at Toowoomba, we don't have one single entity that's going to create a boom here in Toowoomba. So look, we've got little dips, but we've also got little rises. Yeah. So I. I think that you know going forward, you know, it's it's a long term play. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're going to see the the big spikes in property prices that we saw back early in the two thousands. Early two thousands. Yeah, and which, I, which was yeah. really just a correction, really. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and look, I agree. I think that. Um, and I mean, like I've spoken about previously, I mean, I would more I would more refer to it as a mini boom in terms of. Um, I can see us growing through. Uh, extended periods of solid growth yeah. rather than uh, a, a great big spike yeah. uh, in, in one hit and I think that's probably the biggest strength of Toowoomba is the fact that we're, um, we've mentioned a number of times we're not reliant on any one thing no. we have a number of different there's a, well, there's a huge amount of facets that, that make Toowoomba what it is and I think that um, there is so much going right it, yeah. it, it is, and I think where the boom's going to come in is it's in confidence. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think there's going to be a boom in confidence. That's you know, um, that's where it's at, and it's probably for the first time I've seen where as well the amount of you know, probably since we had the airport, you know, there's been yeah. a lot of you know outside investors looking at Toowoomba as oh, you know, is this a space I should yeah, park, yeah. park some money? Definitely, in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot more activity from that. So. People are, you know, looking from Sydney, Melbourne, and we're not just talking about, you know, private wealth. These we're talking about, you know, unlisted funds and funds yeah. that are wanting to park money here in, in Toowoomba. Invest in, yeah. And invest in Toowoomba. So I think that's going to continue going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, for the having those outside people wanting to 
if they've got confidence in Toowoomba, you know, we, as I mentioned before, you know, we've obviously got a large number of you know, private wealthies here in Toowoomba that are confident in Toowoomba, so they're putting the money in, so the Wagons, the FKGs, the Burnoffs, those kind of guys. So whereas I think now it's nice to see people who don't have a emotional attachment to Toowoomba. Investing. Invest in Toowoomba, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that's, we're going to continue seeing that and I think that's going to help us all yeah. in the long run. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic, mate. Well, look, it's been a real pleasure to chat to you. Hopefully, hope it hasn't been too bad. I really hope, guys, that you actually got something out of that. I know it's a little bit different from the uh, normal ask race in terms of residential property, but I do think that this is all interlinked. I think that the the health of our, uh, I guess, local economy, um, how local business is going, our commercial space, and in particular today, we're talking about obviously the CBD and what's going on. Um, really hope you got something out of Justin's, Justin's chat. Yeah, look, thanks, Reese, for having me. Obviously, um, disclaimer that those uh, viewpoints are mine personal. Um, <laughs> they're, they're not those of the college commercial team. So I just want to put that in there just to say that. Co- comments below for Justin. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, um, yeah. look, obviously, you know, I'm happy to talk to anyone around yeah. it, obviously, what yeah. they think and, you know, what impact does the, the commercial scene have, obviously, the residential sector and vice versa. Um, you know, whether it be, obviously, yes, I do focus on the CBD. Um, you know, office and retail. So, look, happy to have a chat to anyone yep. around, you know, where they see it, and obviously, if they want to have a, you know, a, you know, a nice sort of conversation around some of those points that I've raised there, happy to do More so. Than happy to do yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Look, guys, yeah, as I said, really hope you got something out of that today. If you have any comments or questions whatsoever, please post them in the comments below. I will also link up uh, Justin's contact details as well. So if you have any specific uh, questions for Justin, feel free to shoot them through to you. But look, really appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you again soon. See you later. Thanks.